hear that? Hey, what is going on, Koinonia? Welcome to the daily, there's our Tuesday prayer session, segment, whatever you want to call it. I'm so happy that you decided to join us today. Um, Hey, I want to just kind of get right into it. We got some stuff to talk about. I got my notes on my phone, so if I'm looking down, that is what I'm doing. Uh, If you caught the the message this Sunday, uh, you know Andrew spoke on Jesus is everything. And so for today's prayer session, we're going to kind of follow those lines, follow what he taught about, and really break this thing down because I think it's super important that when we pray, that when we make our requests known to God, we have to know that we are making them to Jesus, that Jesus is everything in our lives and kind of filter it through that. And so we want to make sure that we're doing that today and we're going to um, just pray ultimately that, that God's will uh, is done. But I also want to remind you that we are looking at the chat. We want you to send in your prayer requests. We, we know that people are going through all kinds of stuff right now. We know this year started off really, really well for some and maybe not so great for others. And so if you have a prayer request, make sure you put it in the chat. We'll jump in there. And again, like I said last week, this is not just so that I can pray for it, but it's so that our brothers and sisters and our family and our community of believers can join alongside you and with you and and pray for you as well. And so this is not just a prayer session that we do for 30 minutes on a Tuesday, but it's something we take time to highlight and also to encourage to continue praying throughout the week as we all draw closer to Jesus and and run this race that he's called us to run. And so before we jump into prayer, I want to take just a couple minutes to remind you what we were taught Sunday um, about Jesus. So I'm going to read this. It says, Colossians says, for in him, talking of Jesus, for in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Hebrews says that he is the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right-hand throne of God. He is the second Adam. He is our high priest. He is our hope. He is our healing. And he is so many other names. If you go throughout scripture, you'll realize that there is a name for pretty much every situation. He, he is on top of it. He has given these names. He is the Prince of Peace, the Wonderful Counselor, Light of the World, the Redeemer, the Restorer, the Savior, and the list goes on and on. In fact, I encourage you to go and check out, Google it, all the names that Jesus has been given in scripture. And I'm telling you, it amazes me every time I look at it. And so we want to make sure that we are filtered. When we pray, God, hey, will you save us through this situation? We can pray that prayer having full confidence that Jesus is called the Savior. If you're going through something, you're like, God, I need some, I need some redemption in my life. Well, we're praying to the right God because he's called the Redeemer. If I need restoration, we're praying to the right God because he's called the Restorer. If we need counseling, we need help, whatever it is. We know that when we pray to our God, his title is all these things that he, he can match that prayer. He can answer that prayer accordingly and do it well. Uh, so let's, let's pray that we have, um, let's just pray that we have a greater understanding of this. That we understand that our God is a good God. That Jesus is faithful. That he is all these things. And so the first thing is Jesus is everything. That was kind of the topic of Sunday's message. That was the the main point that we're doing. That's also our core value. One of our core values here at Koinonia is we understand that Jesus is everything. And if he is everything, that that, that means that if we're choosing anything other than him, we should repent of that. If we're choosing to make something else in our life everything, then we need to pray and repent that we would turn from those things and turn to Jesus. And then we're going to pray that, again, that we just have a greater understanding. So if you would right now, wherever you're at, I also encourage you to throw some worship music on in the background. Uh, and let's just, let's just take this time, even if as I'm talking, my hope is that as we're praying together, that God would just get a hold of you and you would just continue praying long after this session is over and as you draw closer to Jesus. But I do want to pray um, and take a moment to repent. Uh, we all need to repent. There's always something in our lives that we, we need to turn away from and turn to God. And so we're going to take a minute or so and pray 
uh, a prayer of repentance. And so would you pray with me right now? Father, I thank you so much that we can even come to you and have the option to repent. So right now, Lord, we just we we say we're sorry for putting anything else uh, in our lives ahead of you. If we've made something else our everything, whether that be our job, even our other type of things, God, we just pray that we would turn from those things and we would turn forward to you, that we would make a complete 180 and go back all the way to, um, to making you our everything. God, especially in this season, it's been so easy to get caught up in politics. It's been so easy to get caught up in what the world is saying. It's been so easy to get caught up in what this church and that church is or isn't doing, what this leader or that leader is or isn't doing, God. And I just pray that in this moment that we would have a time of reflection, that we'd have a time to repent, that we can make you our God yet again that we can understand that our source, God, our provision, our protection, God, that we would turn that to you and understand that you are the greatest thing that we could turn to. God, I pray that every person within the sound of my voice would have an understanding that you are everything. You are everything. So God, we thank you so much for that. Help us to have a greater understanding, God, of who you are, the goodness that you present to us. God, the, the, the goodness that you bring into our lives, God, when we look for other things that might offer short-term satisfaction, that we'd understand that you have a greater plan and that your plan for us is good. Your plan for us is to prosper us. So I just thank you right now. I ask that there'd be a shift in people's hearts today, that there'd be a shift in people's mindsets today, and that we would understand that you are all that we need, that you are everything to our lives. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, hey, I want to go over, um, you know, if we're going to be talking about that Jesus is everything and we're talking about prayer, obviously this is what that is. We should also take some time to look at some of the things that Jesus prayed for, right? If you go throughout scripture, you see Jesus praying to the Father in heaven time and time again. He often would go out and seclude himself and just spend intimate moments with with the Father. And I wanted to look at three or four different things today, what we can be praying for. And it, it's amazing because as I looked at the prayers that Jesus prayed, they are so relevant to what we can be praying for today. They are so relevant to everything that we're going through as a people, as individuals, as a church, as a community here. Um, and And Really, my hope, my hope is that we would jump into this and, um, man, if Jesus prayed these prayers, and there are probably some good prayers to pray and that our heart to be uh, centered around that. And the first thing is Jesus prayed for unity in believers, uh, a constant conversation that I'm having with believers and with family and, and my, my real family and my church family is just talking about how much division there is in in everything right now you know let's 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 ignore the world for a minute because we know there's division there but man it's been a rough year or so or a couple of years and seeing the division creep into the church and not just difference in opinions and not just difference uh in some dogmas but this division that's coming in and it's separating people it's separating families it's causing people to leave it's causing people to live in anger and bitterness it's causing people to make their opinions stronger than what god's word says and and we know that that is just not what we should be doing and jesus himself prayed for unity in those that believed in him and i want to just say this unity and uniformity are not the same thing i can i can be united with my friend and my brother or sister in christ and have a difference in opinions on something that's going on right like we can be okay with that but unity is saying hey despite the difference in these opinions we're going to stand together we're going to pray together we're going to worship together we're going to continue pr uh, pursuing jesus wholeheartedly and when i look to my left and when i look to my right and even if i know that there's slightly different opinions on these sides I know that these are still my family and I love them the same and I want them to encounter God the same, just like I want for my life. And so we're going to pray for this in John 17, 11, says Jesus prayed, Holy Father, keep them, speaking of believers, keep them in your name, the name which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. 
right to his prayer, God, would you make sure that you would keep them united? Would you keep them in us? Would you keep their focus on the one mission? Would you keep their hearts intact with what you've given me, the name of Jesus? Would you keep that? So right now, we're going to pray for unity uh, <laughs> unity in our community, right? Let's, let's be a little cheesy right there. Uh, it's how you know that I preach sometimes. Um, we're going to pray for unity in our church, in our body. And so right now, would you pray uh, for unity? Maybe this is something you're struggling with. Maybe this is something you're like, hey, I don't want to pray for this right now. Uh, man, I encourage you to pray anyways. I encourage you to say, God, I'm going to lay this down at your feet. We are called to die to ourselves so that Christ can be magnified in our lives. Less of me, more of him. And so right now, we're going to pray for unity in the middle of division. How powerful. We're going to pray for unity in the middle of a divided country. We're going to pray for unity, maybe even in the middle of divided houses. And we're going to believe that God is going to restore the 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 division and make it unified once again. So let's pray right now, wherever you're at, pray, lift your hands up, do whatever it is that you have to do, but let's pray. God, we pray for unity in households right now. We pray for unity in family. We pray that there would be uh, a restoration, God. We, there, there's been so much division that has happened over these last few few years, God, and, and this last year especially. And right now, God, I pray that there be a united front. I pray that the church would become so unified that the rest of the world would look at it and say, I know you have different opinions on stuff, but how are you standing together so strong? God, right now, there's even been division in churches across this country. God, and I pray that there would be uh, uh, just, just a, a, again, a, a unity that comes over us, that we would learn to love one another through opinions, that we learn to understand that our goal is to not make people think like us politically. Our goal is not to make people think like us about stuff that really doesn't matter, God, but our goal is to be brothers and sisters, a family that loves one another. Your word says that they'll, the world will know us by how we love one another. And it's really hard to love each other well when we're choosing to be divided. So right now, God, would you bring in that redemption? Would you bring in that restoration? Would you bring in um, a, a miracle, an abundance of unity that would come forward? God? God, I pray that we would learn to lay our opinions down, that we learn to lay our ambitions down, God, that we would we would lay these things down for the sake of being united. God, I believe that there's going to be a, a, a big revival that comes through us choosing to be united when the rest of the world is being divided. And so we thank you for what's going to come this way. God, and we ask that you'd give us strength. Being united is hard sometimes. And I pray that you'd give us strength and grace to do so. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, hey, I, real quick, before we move on to the next one, uh, I wanted to say something. My uncle always says this, and it's super annoying. And maybe when I say it, you might think it's annoying as well. But he would say, would you rather be right or would you rather be kind? Because one of those things is drawing people to Jesus. One of those things is, is an example of loving people around you. And if you don't know which one it is, it's choosing to be kind. Let me just give you the, the answer right there. And does that mean we go along with stuff that's, that's adamantly wrong and clearly wrong? No, of course not. But the world isn't going to know us and know that we're children of God by how right we claim that we are. But they're going to know that we belong to him by how we love each other. And in case you're wondering, should we also love those that are our enemies? Yeah, I think scripture is really clear. If you look at an enemy and it, it pulls anything out of you other than love, man, we need to keep praying. We need to keep praying. And we're all guilty of that. So we're going to keep doing it. But choose to be kind today. Let's, uh, let's be united in this thing, even though it's tough. And the second one is Jesus prayed for God's will to be done. Uh, Luke twenty two forty two says, Jesus is praying again. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yep, my, not my will, but yours be done. If you don't know what that cup is, Jesus was about to go and be nailed to a cross. He was about to not only die that death, but he was about to wear, and he knew he was about to wear the guilt and shame and consequence of sin from every person that has ever lived through everybody that will ever live and the weight of that. And he knew he was going to be separated from Father God. 
And he said, God, I, I, I'm not wanting to do this. Have you ever had that prayer? God, I don't want this to happen. I don't really want to take this step because it's hard. It's difficult. It's challenging. And yet at the end of it, Jesus practices perfect submission, right? His opinion was, I don't want to do that. But Father, your will be done, not mine. Your perfect plan be done, not mine. And so right now we're going to pray that same prayer. And this is a scary prayer because oftentimes when you pray this prayer, oh man, like God answered pretty quick, but we're going to pray that God's will be done. And so let's, let's do that. Um, and, and one of the things I did want to add is while we're praying, man, write stuff down, like have a journal. Everybody has a smartphone at this point. I think there's always a little note section that you can jump in, write your prayers down to ask God to speak to you, write what you feel like he's saying to you in these moments, especially when you're saying, God, your will be done, not mine. So let's pray uh, right now for this. Uh, God, God, this is a scary prayer. This is a prayer that terrifies me personally, because every time I've prayed this prayer, you've done something pretty dramatic in my life, or you asked me to take a step of obedience that is challenging. But nevertheless, God, we want to be people that serve you wholeheartedly. We want to be people that move when you tell us to move. We want to be people that when we speak, we're speaking your will, God, and not just our opinions, not just our will. So, God, we pray that just like Jesus in that garden before he went and bore the weight of, of dying on a cross. God, would your will be done in our lives? Would your will be done in our city? Would your will be done in our church? Let us hear exactly what you are saying. Let us hear the things that you are um, asking and wanting of us, God. As we continue to process everything that is happening right now in this country, as we continue to process the different choices and decisions that are made by our leaders, God, in the government or in the church body, God, I pray that before we go out and speak, we would hear what you want us to say. Before we go out and do, we would hear what it is that you're wanting us to do. God, again, we pray for grace, that you would help us move forward, that you would help us take the steps that you ask of us, that you'd help us be obedient, and that we would have a greater understanding that your will is so much better than anything else that we could desire. That on the other side of obedience, God, is, is a reward from you. That on the other side of choosing to follow you is something that we can, we, we, will, we will be closer to you. It, it's something that is so much better than anything we could have imagined. So we just thank you, God. We thank you so much. And we're going to trust you in this next season. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, before we get to the next um my producer hates that I says hey that I say hey all the time. It, I also annoy myself, but it is what it is. Uh, before we get to the third point um, and start to wrap this thing up, we are going to uh, check the chat. I kind of put out out there if anybody had any prayer requests, not only in the Facebook chat, but I put it on my Instagram as well. And uh, we got a few in there, and we just want you to know that we take these things seriously. I'm not just asking you to send in prayers so we can look at them and it's oh we did this good thing. We want to pray with you. And so we're going to take a few moments. If you if you still have something that you need prayer for, put it in the chat. I'm watching them as we do this. Uh, one of them right now is, uh, it says a friend of mine passed away today. Her name is Lorraine Zimmerman and her brother Brent. Um, we're going to pray for the Zimmerman family. Another one is uh, we were told of one of our young adults, Stephanie, her mom is having surgery, a blood transfusion right now. Uh, we know people are struggling with different things. And so we're going to take a few moments to pray for them. If if you put in the chat and I don't address it again, you guys, I just I want you to jump in there and know that people are praying for you. If you see somebody that put a prayer request in the chat, go respond to it. Go let them know. Shoot them a private message. Do something. This is so much bigger than just having a 30 minute prayer segment here, even though this is great and I love it and we get to do it. But this is something that we're going to build and continue to practice praying with and for one another. So let's take a couple minutes to pray for uh, some of these prayer requests that have come in. And again, go through the chat and read them. Let's pray together. God, we thank you so much for, uh, God, we thank you that in the middle of hurt and pain that you are there. 
And though when we pray, there's oftentimes nothing we can say to immediately uh, alleviate people of their pain and their grief, but rather we can grieve with them, rather we can hurt with them, but we can also pray peace and comfort and know that you will come through and know that you are faithful and know that you are there with us even in the midst. When in, in scripture, Jesus, your, your friend Lazarus died. And it says you got there, and there's one of the most profound, confusing little pieces of scripture that just says Jesus wept. Jesus wept. And, and there's so many different th- reasons we can say, why did he weep? And what were these things for? Why was he crying? He knew Lazarus was about to be raised from the dead. And yet I just think it personifies you so well and gives us a, an understanding that you are there to grieve with us, even when you know that there's a miracle on the other side. And so let us again follow your example. Let us again know that we can grieve with people knowing that you are still going to be faithful. And so for for Maria, God, her friends, the Zimmerman family, we pray peace over that, God. We pray that you would just be in the midst of them, that you would, uh, man, that out of this death, God, this literal death, there would be a resurrection of life. There'd be a resurrection of spiritual life. That people that are dead in their sins, out of this literal death, the people that are dead in their sins would come to life in you through whatever the process is next, God. We pray for the Teresa's family as they deal with the, with the same thing, God, a similar thing of death in their family. We pray for Stephanie, uh, her mom, as she gets a blood transfusion. We pray for uh, even me, my personal, my personal family, my grandma, who is having strokes and not doing well and, and, is, and is a little older in age, God. And we just pray there be peace and grace over the family. So God, we just thank you so much. We thank you that you're a God that we can uh, approach your throne boldly, boldly with our prayers. And we do so today. God, would you be here with these people? Would you be here with all of us? In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, I I wanted to hold off a little bit on this third point because uh, you might not like it. I read it today and I did not like it. But the third thing Jesus prayed for is uh, the forgiveness of others. And not only the forgiveness of others, but he prayed the forgiveness of others on those who were not remorseful on those who were not sorry for the things that they did to him. You see what Jesus hung on a cross. He said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they were doing. Let me tell you this. There was nobody there uh, that was super apologetic towards Jesus saying, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry we hung you as he's dying there. Now there were people that churned afterwards. But in that moment, he's saying, Father, forgive them as there was no remorse. And yet, Not only was there no remorse, there was mockery towards Jesus. And in the middle of him being hurt and literally killed as he's hanging there dying, he didn't say, Father, get them. That might have been my prayer. Father, get them. He said, Father, forgive them. And we want to be like Jesus. And in Luke 23, 34, Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Here we see one of the most beautiful pictures of God's grace when Jesus asked the Father to forgive the very people who were hurting and mocking him. They were spitting on him and they were putting him to death. This prayer, uh, this prayer of Jesus not only epitomizes uh, the calling in Matthew 5, to love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. That's challenging right there, right? Like we're going through all the stuff and some of us feel persecuted, but Jesus is like, hey, no, actually bless those that persecute you. Pray those that are hurting you. That's, that's a little bit, that's a lot, right? That's a lot to take in. Pray for those that are hurting me. Pray for those that are trying to shut me down. Pray for those who are trying to cancel my rights. Pray for those who are openly against me. Not Wait, bless them too? Yeah, we are called to pray and bless them. Pray and bless them. This is what Jesus did. He prayed and he blessed us as he bore the weight of every single sin that would be there. Not just those that repented, but those that he that would come to repentance later. We are called to be like Jesus. And so we're going to take a few moments uh, to forgive one another. We're going to take a few moments to forgive those who are not sorry. We're going to take a few moments to forgive those who have hurt us and have no intention of ever apologizing. 
And if that's you, man, right? I put in the chat right now, I'm, I'm going to forgive. Write the word forgiveness. Put something in there just so that we know that you're on board with this. And I know this is tough. This is why I made it my last point. It was kind of easier to pray those other prayers. But this one, we're going to pray that forgiveness happens. We're going to pray that we learn to love people better. So let's pray. Pray right now with me. Jesus, this is a challenging prayer. This is a tough one. But would you help us be people that forgive? And right now, God, as each of us might have thought of somebody um, or something that popped in our head as we're talking about forgiveness, would you help us to forgive those that have hurt us? If we're holding on to anything, if there's any bitterness living inside of us, if there's any hatred or anger that rises up when we think about a certain someone or a certain something or an organization or a government or anything, God, would you help us to, to lay down our opinions and just to begin to forgive those? God, right now, I forgive those who are trying to silence us. I forgive those who have hurt me personally. I forgive those that have hurt my family. God, I forgive everybody. And those that I have a hard time that I can't think of right now that will pop in my mind later, undoubtedly, God, would you help me to forgive them? And maybe this forgiveness thing is a process. But Lord, we want to walk through it. We want to learn how to do it well. We want to learn how to uh, be of someone that forgives quickly. Bring to our minds, God, those that we need to forgive. And forgive us, Lord. Forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for the things that we've done wrong. Forgive us for the things that we've hurt you with. In Jesus' name, we pray this. Amen. Hey, we're going to start to wrap up here, but I wanted to share a quick story uh, on forgiveness. And this is a super vulnerable one and um, not one that I plan planned on sharing, but I'm going to be really open and honest with you. I can't ask you to be open and honest in the chat and then not be the same with you. And so I'm going to share a quick story. This is an insight to my family's life. Uh, when I was just a boy, um, you know, 12, 12, 13 years old, uh, we had a crazy uh, life changing thing happen where a couple of affairs happened within my parents' marriage. And, and one moment um, there, was, there was somebody when I was 16 or 17, uh, my mom had an affair with someone. And uh, this person was close to me, close to my family, and, and it, was, it was damaging. It was really, really damaging and hurt, hurtful. And actually, is the reason we grew up in Bakersfield. And after this happened, we were like, we need a fresh start. And so we moved to Texas. And we were there for a couple years. And I remember one time I came back to visit. And, we, and when we moved, we cut everybody off. We said we're moving to Texas. Two weeks later, we were in Texas. And we didn't talk to anybody. My dad made us delete all of our social media. Uh, we got brand new phone numbers. We did the whole thing. And um, in that moment, uh, one of those moments I came back to Bakersfield to visit some family. And while I'm there, I'm, I'm just kind of driving around. I'm hanging out. I'm having a good time. And God speaks to me and says, hey, I want you to forgive that man. And essentially, that helped ruin your family. I wanted you to forgive. I want you to forgive this person. Uh, that your mom had the affair with. And I'm there and I'm just like, ah, let me think about that one, God. That's a bit much because we're pretty damaged right now. And then God spoke again and said, no, no, no. I want you to go find him, pray with him, and tell him that you forgive him. And I'm just like, God, the first part was so much easier when I thought I just had to do it, you know, in my heart and in my mind. But now you're asking me to go out there and forgive him and pray with him. And so somehow I mustered up, I, I find him on Facebook, I message him, I say, hey man, uh, let's meet. And he's like, okay, like let's talk, let's whatever. And so I go over there, I'm like 19 years old, I'm a kid. And I go over there and I and I'm sit with him and, and this, this was the picture painted. My family is broken, broken, broken out in Texas and a new city and a new state across the country, uncomfortable from everything I had ever known. And this man is still living in his hometown, has a brand new wife now, has a brand new baby kid. And I'm looking at him, I'm saying, your life is so good. It isn't fair. My family is broken, lost in another state. And God, you have me here wanting to forgive this guy. I didn't want to do it. I said, God, I I'm going to do it. I'm going to try. And so I meet with him. I sit there and we go take a seat outside and we begin talking. 
and and just kind of catching up a little bit. It's super awkward. But towards the end of it, I said, you know what, man? I, I, I want you to know that I forgive you. I want you to know that anything that's happened, I do not hold it against you. And and I want to pray a prayer of blessing over you. And so we did this and I and I prayed with him and uh, we hugged afterwards. I blessed him. I blessed his family and, and I left. And I remember thinking about that years later and just like, God, that was so crazy. But as soon as we did that, as soon as I let him know that I forgave him, not only was I free, but he was free from the stuff that he was feeling. Now, I don't know what, what happened. I don't know what went on to happen with his family or life, but I'm here to tell you that there is there's so much power when you choose to forgive those who have hurt you. Now, this guy never came and apologized to me first before I came and said, hey, I forgive you. Even though he felt apologetic, he didn't know how to come to me first. So sometimes God will ask you to go out of your way to pray something for someone, forgive someone, pray for unity, uh, pray for God's will to be done. And, and maybe somebody else isn't doing it first, but that's where you get to come in and you get to do it first. That's our calling, right? We get to do it first. And so we're going to wrap this thing up. I pray that that was encouraging to you. We're going to pray one more time as we close out. Again, continue to put your prayer requests in the chat. We go back. We look at them. We want to pray with you. And we just want you to know that you are extremely loved. You are valued. You are cared for. And I am so excited for what God is going to do in the future. But let's pray one more time as we close this Tuesday daily out. God, thank you so much that we get to use technology to pray as a community. Thank you that you are not hindered by us not being in person all the time, God, but your spirit transcends screens. Your power transcends time. It goes from place to place. God, there's power in just saying your word, God. So right now, I pray for every person watching this, every person that is struggling, every person that might feel divided, everything that we might be going through, God, I pray that there would be a complete a restoration, God, that we become united, the most united we've ever been. God, that we would follow your will, that we'd be better at obeying you, more obedient than we've ever been. God, and we'd be people that forgive and forgive quick. That there would not be bitterness living in any one of us. God, that we would learn to love better. That we'd learn to love first. So we just thank you so much. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, I love you guys so much. I will see you next time. Tune in tomorrow, Wednesday for the daily 12 o'clock, and we will see you then.